Hi everyone, it's Lee with Arts Council OKC Creative Aging Program and today we're going to do a fun kind of quick watercolor painting of colorful birds. So the materials you're going to need are a pencil, watercolor paper, watercolors, various sizes of paint brushes, probably, you know, mostly kind of um, small to medium, paper towels for blotting, and of course, water. So let's get started. Well, actually, the reason why I call it a quick sketch is just because we are going to do a lot of, you know, a bit of wet on wet just to get in like the basic colors, not necessarily painting all of the feathers and with exacting detail, but just to kind of have fun and blend some colors in the birds. So, alrighty, let's get started. Okay, so what I've done is I've got the basic sketch of the bird down and, um, you know, no, not a whole lot of detail. This bird has um, greens and blues and yellows, so I kind of wanted to give myself enough information so that I can know where some of the colors are. But you know, with the bird, just here's a big oval. You can do another oval down here and one in here and the nice beak. So really pretty simple shapes. And then I, I this one, I put them on a little branch. I like having, you know, these are nice close-ups, but then I like having little branch information sometimes if you want them to sit on it and just information for the eye, that kind of thing. And you can use a big eraser at the end to erase what um, pencil lines you want to or not. I mean, once they're painted over, they're pretty much there. So I, I, I kind of personally like the idea of having um, pencil lines un showing underneath the watercolor. And so on these guys, See how a lot of this is just really loose. It just changes the color, but there's a lot of water in it. And then if you're, you know, parrots have kind of a blackish beak, but black is not necessarily totally black. It's got a lot of blue in it. Now on this toucan, I kind of just did some grays and blacks, but you can see that on the parrot's beak, it's actually a lot more interesting and pretty. So, and it's a lot quicker, well, a little more fluid. It just depends on what you're, how you're feeling. And like this bird, I don't remember the name of it, but this is a real bird. It has more color blocks, but there is a little bit of a blend. So it makes it, gives it a lot more depth and interest if you're mixing your colors. And so what I wanna do on this bird is I wanna get some of my paints wet. And a lot of this has yellow undertone. So what I'm going to do is just kind of take yellow and just kind of spread it around m most of my, all of my bird where I know it is. Now the beak area is kind of gray and black, so it's fine if I get it, you know, get it in there, but I don't have to if I don't want to. So I'm just going to kind of put this in here and you definitely, just as a reminder with watercolor, use your lightest colors first. So, and I just kind of want to give a nice little bit of yellow under here. You know, not a whole lot. And this is, you know, we're just doing just a quick kind of, like I said, kind of a water color, color sketch of this bird. And if you want to, while that's drying just a hair, we can add a little bit of, let's see. And I have this sitting on like a paper palette, so if you need to mix it, you can mix it right on here. Um, I'm gonna add, this has a few different greens. I'm just gonna kind of put some of it here. A little bit of a darker green. And some lime green. And here again, you're still going to want to do, if you know this ends up being darker, but it has some lime green undertones, then I'm gonna add this in. Oops. So. And then I like to blot it, but 
We're just kind of layering in some colors. And it, you know, like I said, we're not doing individual feathers or anything. We're just kind of adding the basic colors. And so now what I can do is go back in here and actually dot with the brush the dark green on top. So then that kind of does give a little bit of a wing or, you know, not wing, but feather look. Now it's a bit wet, so it won't hold its shape as much, but you can come back when it's a little bit drier and do that again. And we're just gonna kind of add a little more yellow up here. Now you can see I didn't get my brush rinsed out as well as I should have, but that's all right. It's watercolor, it's forgiving. We're just gonna move it around. But then I don't want the watercolor to be too opaque. So I need to add, really add some more water and just kind of get it out of the way here. And then you can kind of bring it down in here so it kind of blends a little bit because the feather colors actually beautifully color blend into each other. Nature's pretty amazing and it has a little bit of the green up here too. And so I'm just kind of kind of dot it so it kind of blends in. And I can do some of that here to kind of give that little bit of feathery look in here too. And see, just by having more than one color, it really adds a nice look to it. And I'm gonna, let's see. This part is kind of a bluish color with a little bit of green in it. So we're gonna kind of come in here and do some more of that. But as you know, it, like I said, if it gets, if you think you have too much color, then pull it off and just add water. And there's a little more turquoisey color in this. So you can see, in, I'm using a flat brush just because in that way I can kind of come in here and use it. And this is, you know, a nice medium-sized brush. You can cover a lot of ground with it, but then also you can turn it on its edge and use the edge of it and get, so you can do nice stripes if you wanted to, to kind of really denote the shape of the tail. Feathers down in there. So like I said, this is kind of watercolor sketching, I like to say. We're just kind of getting in big blocks of color. And now there, I'm gonna use some other blue here. So a bit darker, and this is blue in here too. So I'm not counting how many lines are here. I'm just coming in and kind of giving the little line suggestion for how the feathers are lining up on the, where the wings are. And this one has some darker blue down in here with feather. So you can see really your birds coming together pretty quickly. And then there's some green on top of this that, you know, it's fine that I already put the blue there because it's darker and so I'm gonna add this in here. So don't be afraid to paint on top because blending the colors is, in watercolor is actually really, really cool. You, it's, it's just different. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Don't try to overwork it, because that's what happens if you just keep going over it. Then your watercolor isn't as transparent or translucent. Mm -hmm. So I wanna get a little bit brighter yellow up here. And now remember your colors will change and blend together. You know, yellow and blue make green, so just be aware, but that's okay because that's what this bird does look like you know it has lots of greens and blues and I'm gonna kind of come back and take a little bit of this out because it's a brighter yellow in the, in the throat area so 
And then remember your directional lines too, even when painting. So if you're bringing your lines down here, that's gonna give it a little, look like little bits of feather. So, okay. Now this is your little bit of underpainting and I'm gonna do a little bit more yellow up here. It's a little bit brighter right in here. Okay, and this has a little more blue in the shoulder here. And you do not have to get your colors exact, like, you know, a specific bird. This is just, I like to look at reference images of real birds, you know, photographs just because nature is amazing, has lots of fabulous color. Now, so you can totally make your hot pink and purple polka dotted bird as well. So just have, just have fun with it. Now I know some of the little bits of detail are getting covered up and that's fine. That's just because it's all still kind of wet. I'm going back in. Okay, and this gives it a little bit more of the. But everything is still wet, so it's gonna kind of blend back in, but then you can kind of see the little bits of feathery texture that I want it to have. Okay, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a little bit of brown for the branch here, just kind of really lightly. Woo, it's not light, but that's okay. It's watercolor. I just blot some off and move it. Just kind of stay a little bit away from your bird, so to your wet areas. And I'm just kind of moving it around so it looks a little bit like wood. And I accidentally got in here on the bird. That's okay. It'll dry. And then I can... It's still pretty wet, so I'll just come back and add a little bit more later. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of black in here. There's black and gray in the black, and I'm gonna use a different brush, something smaller. Because once the black's on there, you wanna kind of move it quickly because I don't want it to be so opaque. Because and then I can just go ahead and do the whole thing in a little light gray wash. So I'm gonna keep, um, and then I'm gonna let this sit just a minute and then I can do the, oh, let's see what colors. Do that. Okay, do a little brown in here. Probably should have used a slightly smaller brush, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna pull some of this off. Just watch your hand. You don't wanna get your hand on your wet. I'm pulling some of this off. But I'll finish what I was saying. You don't wanna drag your hand across your wet painting. Okay. I'm gonna pull a little bit more of this off. This is dry just a minute, and so we'll kind of keep going here. And like these have a little loose backgrounds in them. If you want to put those in there, you don't have to. Um, yeah, I just took this kind of size brush and just kind of 
got it pretty wet and put some color on it and then just kind of bounce it around. I like that really kind of just a hint of color, but a little floaty. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. That's really not a little bit, that's a lot. So, kind of wanted a goldeny brown and And even while it's still wet, I'll just add a few more line details because then they're gonna soften anyway. So this is where we're just kind of working with how the water is on the paper. Okay. I'm gonna get a little more black on here. But you're getting the idea of just you're kind of letting it really kind of just be fluid and flow and not really worry about um, hyper-realistic or uber-detailed things. I have more black on my brush here, but... I still don't wanna get too much on there. And I think my, my beak here will be a little more kind of grayish than black anyway. So I still want to kind of blend it in here so you can kind of see I'm still just doing that little bit of tapping because the black slightly blends into the yellows. And then too, if you want to come back and have a really distinct line, you can use a little bitty brush or you can use like a pen, but that might seem a bit harsh. So let's turn this a hair here. Water is your friend, and just work slowly. And even if it's pretty monochromatic, still do your directional stuff. Oh my gosh, but don't do what I just did and drag your paper through your watercolor that you have on your palette. It does happen, but that's okay. I drove my hand through it too. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna... I was trying to paint in an awkward position and that's kind of why that, that didn't help me, so. But then I do have yellow on my arm, on my hand here. The nice thing about watercolor is you get it, if you get it on you, it'll wash out just fine. So. Okay. And then if you track it, then just take a damp paper towel and kind of wipe it off underneath. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of color for the legs here. And I like to mix a few colors, so this is like a little bit of black and some blue, and there's a lot of black in there, so. Just blot it on your paper towel first and Spread it out. And then if you think you have too much, just you know, rinse it in water and then just keep spreading it. He does have kind of a grayish blue leg, but 
Maybe not exactly like this, but that's all right. We're just, this is practice. So. Anyway. And make sure you, you're not painting with black water or green, really dark green water if you're trying to do something light. Make sure you get your brushes clean, you know, rinsed out and use clean water when you need it. And then use less water and more paint if you are trying to add a really nice dark bit of color in here. There's a little nostril. But here again, I'm at a funny angle, so help yourself. Work smarter, not harder. seem kind of harsh right there, but we're going to smooth it out. Let me move that stuff out of the way here. And you know, and too, if things kind of get a little dark faster than you want, just keep moving it, and that's and that's all right. Black is kind of tricky, so I actually have more black on the beak than I intended, but that's okay. I'll still kind of come back in here and take some off. I may not be able to get as much off as I want, but that's okay. I'm just you rinse your brush off first, and then you blot it and get it drier and then keep taking some of the color off. You missed kind of his nostril, but that's okay. It's still kind of doing what I want it. And I'm gonna bring this out because it starts blending in here. But you can see that it's kind of it's not a stark black, which is what I wanted. We lost his nostril, but that's okay. And what you can do too is go back in with a bit of darker blue since this has dried a little bit, since it has some darker blue areas. You can use this brush or you can use the bigger brush we were using, whatever you're comfortable with. I just kind of wanna go over some things to kind of add in more of the wing lines. Here again, I'm not doing too much detail and it's okay if you don't go exactly over the same lines you did a minute ago, it's, it's totally fine. And if you, you know, I'm gonna soften this a little bit because the whole point was kind of keeping everything, the edges a little bit soft. And now if you really wanna go back in and do some definite um, detail work, you can. This, I just like kind of having you all try different things. So you can kind of go back in here and just do some, gives it a little bit, can look like polka dots, but gives a little bit of that feathery, furry look. And some more green in here. But this really is mostly suggested shapes. It's not, you know, it's not exacting, but I always like to, tell you all that and, and now sometimes you kind of lose your shapes and in which you might have to go back when your paper has relaxed a little bit because if you if you work it too much while it is 
wet, then it gets unhappy. So I don't wanna get the paper too stressed out. So it maybe needs to sit a little bit. Okay, but you get the idea. It's a nice little, um, simple little bird, you know, watercolor sketch. This may be, you know, a little bit darker, a little more opaque than I originally intended, but that's okay. You know, a way you can do it is I can come back in here, I just put some water on my brush and I'm daubing it off. And also, to break this up later, once it's dry, you can add a little darker color on top just to kind of break it up. So it's all a learning process, you know, and some days my stuff is better than others too. So <laughs> the main thing is we're learning something and trying something new and just have some fun. All right, so take good care of yourselves and we will see you next time.